This is Life with Herpes, and this is episode 94. Hello, hello, welcome to today's episode. I am your host, Alexandra Harbushka, and as always, I am so excited to be here with you. Whatever it is you are doing, I am doing it with you. So if we're on a bike ride, if we're on a road trip, if we're on an airplane, I am traveling with you or doing the dishes with you or whatever it is. So cool, right? Like, let's hang out. <laughs> um, before I get going. There are going to be some resources for you that I want you to check out. So go to lifewithherpes.com. I do talk about them in this episode. One of them is hint, 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 a lube, right? Lube. Yes, I said lube. And the other one is uh, resources for for an outbreak, you know, how to help you heal your outbreak and speed up the recovery process. So just go to lifewithherpes.com for your resources and other fun stuff. All right, speaking of lifewithherpes.com, if you are not a member, I'm gonna invite you to become a member. I know it's a membership that we didn't wanna be a part of. Trust me, I didn't either. But you know what, it is totally okay and there's a lot going on over there. I really do wish I had this when I was first diagnosed with herpes. I don't know about you, but I was completely alone and in the dark and was left to do all the research on my own and I couldn't talk to anybody about it. Not that we even really did this when I was diagnosed because we, there wasn't, wasn't a thing. Like social media wasn't what it is today. Anyways, for those of you that are listening and you're not watching on YouTube, I was doing the like little phone signal with my thumbs like I was texting. Yeah, we didn't really do that in 2011. We texted, but it wasn't what it is now. Let's just put it that way. All right, anyways, totally off subject. So go to lifewithherpes.com, join, it's free. And there's hundreds of people just like you and me in the community and there's there's a lot going on so go join get join get get into the slack group that's really the main reason why i want to invite you over there all right without further ado let's talk i have my notes here because i don't want to forget but let's talk about some activities that can cause outbreaks so as you know we've talked about ways to prevent outbreaks things that cause outbreaks when you get an outbreak, how do you recover fast? What the heck is an outbreak? All the signs, symptoms, all these things. But what I wanna talk about today are what are some, some activities that we may be doing or partaking in and have no idea that it could be contributing to our outbreaks. So I don't know if you are like me, but I know when I first was diagnosed, I was like, trying to Google and figure out and really trying to figure out what things caused outbreaks and what things didn't. So I did it all wrong. I did all the things that caused outbreaks and after years of putting it together and also listening to our community, again, back to our Life with Herpes community, there's a lot of people over there saying like, hey, this works for me or hey, I wanna try this. Will I get an outbreak? So there's a lot of research going on into this. So anyways, let's get to it. What are some ways that can actually contribute or cause an outbreak. Number one, sex. I know, sex, 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 sex. Okay, <laughs> so sex, when, when we have sex, there's friction, right? And friction is a beautiful thing with sex. If we didn't have friction, sex wouldn't feel good. It's like peanut butter and jelly, sex and friction, right? That's the whole that's that's the whole thing. Like that's what makes that's why we have sex, right? Is we have friction. What can happen is if there is too much friction or if it is too much if there's not enough lubrication or it's it's you know sometimes you're wetter and sometimes you're drier or some you know it just it is time of the month things like that. So if you have the dry friction that's not good. And that can actually aggravate your area for both men and women, right? So it just depends on the sensitivity. It depends on what type of sex. Is it rough sex? All that stuff. So what I want to recommend for that is making sure you have plenty of lubricant. 
There's there's a lot of different choices. I personally, 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 personally love the Woo foreplay. It's awesome. I unfortunately don't have it right here. It's in the other room. I should have had it available. But the Woo foreplay is great. It's organic. It's it's coconut oil, which is also great for us. And that's really awesome. I do want to make sure I point out, if you are using condoms, which I highly recommend, of course, especially if it's a new relationship and things like that, especially if you're in a relationship where you want to prevent passing it to your partner. If you are using condoms, then I want to make sure that you do not use an oil-based lubricant. I want to make sure that you use a water-based lubricant. The reason why. The reason why is the oil can begin to tear the condoms. It, 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 it kind of breaks down the latex and then therefore there's tears and then if there's tears, what's the point of even using a condom, right? It's like the idea is gone. So yeah, I wanna make sure that you guys do know that. I do have a whole episode on that and we do talk about condoms and lube and all that fun stuff and herpes. All right, next one. This one is a hard one for me. Travel. In case number two, travel. Travel can absolutely cause an outbreak. So unlike sex, there is no necessarily friction with travel. However, what we don't realize is when we travel, we're on different time zones, we're adding different foods to our diets, we're super excited about our travels, or maybe we're not, maybe we're going to see the in-laws over the holidays, whatever it is, it really creates a big stress on your body. So when your body's under stress, guess what happens? It's in like the freak out mode and your immune system shuts down. So when your immune system shuts down, that allows, it's an opportunity for the herpes virus to pop up. So just keep that in mind. Travel for me is always, always, always a big, big, big contributor to getting outbreaks. I, I, I mean, it's, it's almost, it's not like if it's like when I'll get it. So Oh yeah, other thing on, you know, when you travel, I added the food, you're drinking more alcohol, maybe, probably, you're just, you're just having fun, right? You're just not in your normal system and your routine and therefore your body doesn't really know what's going on. So it kind of shocks your body. So that's really what happens with travel. So yeah, that was a, that's a big one for me. It's a hard one. And to, to prevent those outbreaks, you're tired, you're the stress of the airport, all that stuff. All right, travel, travel's a big one. All right, next one is for, this one's more towards people with oral herpes, but the sun. So the sun can cause outbreaks. Why that is, I'm not, like why is it just for oral herpes, things like that? Not too sure, but here's, here's what happens with it, is the more you're in the sun, the UV, <laughs> UV lights, the, the, the U, <laughs> Let me say that again. The UV rays come into our system and on one level, they're really good for us, right? It gives us vitamin D and it, it's, they're important for us. We need sunlight to grow, just like plants. However, there comes to a level where you, there's too much sunlight. So when there's too much sunlight, a lot of times that does cause an outbreak because just like anything, too much of a good thing can also be a negative side. And when there's too much UV rays in our system, our immune system has to work harder and it kind of suppresses our immune system. Who knew, right? So yeah, a lot of times it's more for oral herpes. Why is it more oral herpes than it is genital herpes? Not really sure that answer, but I do know that the sun can cause outbreaks for people. For me personally, I have oral herpes and being in the sun does not cause it. But I, then again, there's a lot of people, there was a study of people um, when they're in boot camp in the military and they're out in the sun, a lot of times they get a lot of outbreaks. Now, I'm sure they're also super stressed because they're in boot camp. However, there's a lot of studies of people that are like in the sun a lot, they tend to get more outbreaks. So just keep that in mind, you know, monitor your time in the sun, use sunscreen, y you know the deal, you know the deal. Yeah, but sun, who knew? All right, this one is more for women. But I'm sure men get into this as well. Grooming, all right, so grooming. So keeping our area clean. Now we do have pubic hair for a reason. It is to keep it safe. It actually does kind of prevent a lot of heebie-jeebies getting in there. Who knew that was a big deal when the whole porn industry decided that everybody should be shaved and cleaned and maybe this would have helped with 
with STDs and the herpes epidemic, but who knows, right? But anyways, yeah, uh, grooming. So a lot of times, and this is one specifically I've heard in our community, is people will say, hey, I'm every time I shave, I get awful razor burn, and then I get an outbreak. Is this typical? And I have heard this happening a lot to a lot of women in our community. They also ask, hey, what about waxing? What about lasering? What about sugaring? What about plucking? What about all this? Any type of thing that can cause kind of an aggravation to the vaginal area can also kind of create an outbreak. I'm not saying that shaving necessarily is the outbreak, but a lot of times what happens is a lot of women in our community are like, hey, I get razor burn, but it sometimes feels like it's an outbreak. I just can't tell the difference. And then I get all stressed out about it and then it turns into an outbreak. So definitely keep that in mind, depending on how you groom. Perhaps if shaving doesn't work for you because of, you know, you get horrible ingrown hairs, then maybe you should look at waxing or even lasering. Uh, also there's sugaring. There's a lot of different things to do to trim and keep everything nice and neat and organized and pretty and all that. Or just go with the normal bush, whatever works for you. That's just something I wanted to throw out because it's something that we don't always think about and we sometimes forget because we're like, oh, I'm always shaving or whatever. Yeah, I don't miss that. I I don't shave anymore and I don't I don't miss that. The the whole razor burn thing. Oh, I remember that in like high school and oh yeah. Not fun. You get all those ingrown hairs and yeah, I don't miss that. I don't miss that at all. Anyways, okay, moving on. This one is kind of a bundle and what it is is trauma to the area. So, so what I, I don't mean like you fall and there's like a traumatic event or anything like that. What I do mean is anytime there is any activity that can cause trauma to the skin or just trauma to the area. So these activities are riding a bike, horseback riding, maybe it's riding the bull at a bar. I don't know, maybe that's your thing. Um, what else is a big deal? Let me look at my notes. Um, wardrobe trauma, right? Like ladies, come on, we know we have the lingerie that is like you try and put it on and wear it and it's really not lingerie you're supposed to wear. You're supposed to like lay there and look sexy in and like maybe just stand there for five minutes in, but we decide we're gonna try and wear it out on a date and then you come home and you're like, ow, everything hurts down there. That type of lingerie. Yeah, so that type of lingerie can cause you some trauma to the area. What else? I'm into jumpsuits right now or like the body suits with all like the 25 snaps down there that takes you forever to go to the bathroom. Those little snappy things, you know, can, can cause a little sore, which could then turn into an outbreak just because of the trauma. So, so wardrobe and an actual physical trauma can cause, oh, my computer's talking, can, can, can cause these types of outbreaks. This is not something that is, that is, is for everybody. It does not mean that if you go for a bike ride, you're gonna necessarily get an outbreak. For me personally, I don't ride a bike enough. And so when I do go for a bike ride on 4th of July, or I do go on a bike ride once in a blue moon, it, I, I can feel an outbreak coming on just because of the rubbing and the sensation that it causes. It just, it gets very irritated. So just keep that in mind. Pay attention to maybe some of your wardrobes or certain activities. This doesn't mean that, let's say you decide you wanna become, you know, this, this uh, cyclist and go cycle the world and you're like, I can't become a cyclist because I have general herpes. That's not what I mean. I believe you could probably build up a tolerance just like anything, right? You know, I got a new pair of running shoes, I built up blisters and now my ankles aren't bleeding when I'm running. Same thing, right? So you can build up tolerance, I believe, and then you should be good to go. So this doesn't mean that like you can't be a horseback rider or go on a dude ranch for a family vacation and all that. Just keep those little things in mind that the trauma can cause, and when I say trauma, I, I realize it's just trauma to the area. So just back to the friction thing. That, that could be a little traumatic for it and then voila, there's a sore. All right, and here's kind of the last one. It's high intensity exercise. So number six, high intensity exercise. And 
If you're thinking I'm saying don't exercise and this is music to your ears, that is not at all what I'm saying. Exercise is a really good thing. Exercise increases your metabolism, which is always a good thing. It helps you sleep better, so more sleep, more rest, you're resting your body. It also can help you boost your immune system. Exercise can kind of inadvertently help you eat healthier, live a healthier lifestyle, all those things. It's the high intensity exercise. So if all of a sudden you decide you wanna become Flojo and you're gonna become a Michael Jordan or you're gonna be Michael Phelps and all of a sudden you can't figure out why you're getting all these outbreaks because you're swimming for 25 hours, I know there's 24 in a day, but you're swimming for 25 hours in a day and you're just working out, working out, working out, that could possibly be a really big reason why you're getting so many outbreaks is you're just pushing your body one too many laps too far. And there are studies done that when you take your exercise level to this next intense athlete level status, it actually can lo lo lower your immune system. And what do we know from that? Lower immune system can mean an opportunity for the herpes virus to come in. So basically summing up these three, these, these six things, it's a combination of activities that either lower your immune system, so travel, high intensity exercise, um, I think those are the two, or the other ones are basically like a little trauma to the area or a little uh, sensitivity to the area or a little like, ooh, ow, that didn't feel good and then it can potentially turn into an outbreak. None of these things are necess necessarily gonna turn into outbreak. If you're listening to this, you're like, Alexandra, I travel for a living and I don't get outbreaks. Or you're like, I am a cyclist, I do spinning five times a week, I am one of those, like, I am lifting all these weights, I am like, I'm a full-on athlete, I don't get outbreaks, great. That means that your body is doing everything to the, its level to prevent these outbreaks, right? Just, just kind of keep these things in mind. Like I said, for me, you know, um, waxing or shaving or any of that never caused an outbreak. But for me personally, travel does. Wardrobe stuff doesn't necessarily cause an outbreak for me. Like the little body suits, the little snappy things, that doesn't feel good. Sometimes I get a little like rash because they don't, they're not in the right spot, but it's not an outbreak. I I'm a big exerciser. I exercise a lot. I, I do boot camp and bar and I run and all that. And that doesn't cause outbreaks. So just keep in mind for you. And I just want to put this out there so that you can be aware and do really what's best for your body. If you do have an outbreak right now and you're like, oh my gosh, how do I get rid of this? What do I do? I don't know what, what's going on. I want you to go to lifewithherpes.com and I do have the outbreak the herpes outbreak toolkit for you. So it is there for you to purchase, download, it goes right to your phone or email, whatever you want. And it does have all the, the, the best things that you can use right now to help you cure your outbreak. When I say cure, I mean basically heal your outbreak. Then finally, I was mentioning earlier the lube, which would help with the friction and make it nice and fun and whatever you wanna do with it. Um, yeah, I have that link also in, I'll have it in the YouTube below and also if you're listening in iTunes or whatever medium you're using to listen to, I will have this in the show notes. So this has been awesome. I am so glad to be here with you and I love you guys. I love, I just, I love this. Like seriously, I am so honored to be here with you. Um, mom, 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 mom. I can't wait to meet you. Go to lifewithherpes.com. Come say hi, join, say what's up. And I'll see you all soon. All right. See you in the next episode. Mm -hmm.